And keep them hashtags, you know I see ya Talk about you the best, people never heard of ya It's all about the punchlines, you know they clever Hello never Misfits, this is uh, this is Red going in solo I just watched the Elimination Chamber uh, I gotta say, it was a really good show It was a really good show on Smackdown's part And uh, I, I enjoyed all the matches The one match I didn't enjoy is the is the Nikki Bella and Natalia match I don't know why. I I just was not interested in the whole storyline or anything like that. Not really sure why. It's just boring to me. But the whole show itself was really really good, and I'm really interested in seeing if what or uh, what Raw can do to top SmackDown show with uh, Fastlane coming up. But uh, let's go down the list. Uh, we had the we had the pre-show with uh, Mojo Rawling and uh, Kurt Hawkins, and it. You know, it's a pre-show standard uh, match and everything, but everything went well. And Kurt Hawkins actually looked like he wanted to, like, actually not be in the whole gimmick and be in a jobber or anything like that. He was actually wrestling, and it was actually pretty good. They actually had a good pop during the match. Um, overall, Mojo Rawling, he got the wind and everything. Good on him. Uh, the first match of the night was uh, Be Becky Lynch against Mickey James. And... Even this one. This one was actually pretty good also. And these two had their whole rivalry going with each other. And, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if Josh was here, he would, he would tell you how much he's, uh, he's all into Mickey James. Yeah, so shout out to Josh on that one. But it was a pretty good match overall. Uh, Mickey James was going for uh, Becky Lynch's arm, trying to... Trying to just, uh, you know, soften her arm up and everything. You expect Becky Lynch to do that to uh, Mickey James and everything. But it was it was a turnaround and everything. And uh, Becky Lynch got the... She got... she Yeah, she got the pin on uh, Mickey James and everything. So I don't know where they're going to go with this. If they're going to continue the... Uh, if they're going to continue the rivalry on uh, SmackDown and everything. Yeah, next up was uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Kalisto and Apollo Crews. And... This one wasn't too bad. Apollo Crews actually looked pretty good in this one. Um, Kalisto, on his entrance, he got attacked by Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Dolph Ziggler attacked him, threw him against the, the, the video entrance area, and uh, looked like Kalisto was out, so it was a one-on-one -on -one match uh, between Dolph Ziggler and Apollo Crews. And it was actually pretty good. They did pretty good. Apollo Crews uh, has been having like a rocky start ever since he's been called up from NXT, and it was really good to see him in this match. He did actually you know do pretty good and everything Kalisto came out uh towards kind of towards the end of the match and everything and they were doing their you know some double teaming on Dolph Ziggler uh eventually Apollo Crews got him and uh pinned Dolph Ziggler in the middle of the mat fortunately after the match and everything Dolph Ziggler uh knocked Kalisto right onto the outside apron and Kalisto was out and which brought Ziggler come into, well, he he was getting a chair, and then Paul Cruz came out, running around the ring for a little bit, and then Ziggler got him with a knee to the to the shoulder area, it looked like, and that's when uh, Ziggler started beating him down, put his uh wedge, well wedged his ankle into the the chair, looked around for a little bit, and he uh, stomped on the chair not once but I think it was twice and everything. So uh, Ziggler. Going with the whole heel persona and everything, good on him, you know, because he, I think the whole, to be honest, I think the whole face thing was was getting a little stale for him. So it's good to see him do a little turnaround on his character and everything. So uh, Dolph Ziggler going, he was the last man standing, even though he lost. All right, the next one was uh, the tag team turmoil, which I really thought was really good. I, I, I like, I thought... I didn't know what they were going to do with the whole tag team turmoil. I thought they were just going to have all the teams in the same ring and just whoever gets eliminated and they just keep going. And I don't know. This one, I, I like the format on this one. This one was actually pretty good. You had Rhino and Heath Slater uh, starting the match with uh, Brizongo. And they did pretty good. Brizongo doing the whole thing. They actually, it was actually pretty good for the time being that they were in the ring and everything. But Rhino hit the hit the gore and everything and they uh they they advance and so brizongo was out next up was the vaude villains vaude villains came out also the same thing rhino hit the the gore and uh then they got pinned they were out 
Next up was uh, uh, the Usos. The Usos came out. Um, the Usos with their whole heel persona and everything. They're coming out and everything. They, I kind of like it. I really do. But uh, they, they, they eventually got one over on Heath Slater and Rhino. So Heath Slater and Rhino were out. Next up, the tag team SmackDown tag team champions. Um, American Alpha, which I really like. And... I, they, you know, they take me back and everything. I, I used to watch the Steiner brothers and everything, uh, Rick and Scott Steiner. So these guys, the way these guys wrestle, kind of like it, it brings me back to them. And even, the, you know, they, I think their, their, uh, their whole uh, persona and uh, like their, just how they are, they, they kind of have that throwback of where they, they uh, take from the Steiner brothers and they, they, you know, I think they mentioned it as well. And so uh, eventually they, they got. Um, they pinned uh, the Usos out and everything, and the Usos uh, didn't like that for, you know, the whole heel persona because they had they you know the American Alpha and the Usos have history together and everything. Uh, American Alpha, I think it was Chad Gable was the one who got injured by the Usos and everything uh, during the time when uh, American Alpha was first around on the main roster and everything. But uh, everybody thought that they were just gonna be uh, you know easy pickings for ascension the ascension came out and everything and those dudes uh they they kind of scare me and everything especially you know they the whole makeup and the and um the mask that they wear and everything but eventually they got it i uh, i thought you know they were i thought they were going to be easy pickings for the ascension and um just the way they did it they got one out they hurry and jump back in got the other one pinned them and everything and they won you know American Alpha still SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And here is the next match. It is uh, Nikki Bella versus Natalia. And this is the one I was telling you about. This I wasn't interested in this one. And uh, me and Josh, we had a, a little, uh, a little uh, top five of the week uh, podcast that we did the other day and everything. And I, I, we were talking about the Elimination Chamber card. And when we got to this, I just told him I wasn't interested in this one. It, it's just the whole, the way they build the storyline and everything. The story about, you know, is John Cena going to be with you with this or he would be with me or whatever. I, I understand what uh, Josh was talking about. They're doing this for Total Divas. This is for the Total Divas audience and everything. And I'm just not into that. It was, a, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a cheap way to, uh, to try to get heat in the thing and just i understand that it's for you know for a tv show that you're a part of and everything but still it was it was just i'm, I'm just this was the lowest point for me in in the whole pay-per-view and everything and they did their thing they they came out they uh they got on each other there was you know natalia acting like she was hot shit and everything and uh eventually they uh both were beating each other up on the outside and everything they were trying to one was trying to run back in, but I think it was uh, Nikki Bella who was trying to run back in, and Natalia grabbed her, and it was a double count out. They were still fighting each other, and I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. I don't know where they're going with this. Uh, if it's just like, if it is for the, if it is for the show and everything, then it's just boring. I'm not interested in that and everything. So, all right, the next one up was uh, Randy Orton versus Luke Harper, and I was really impressed with Luke Harper. Luke Harper's always impressed me. He's always been a good worker, and to put him in there with a veteran like Randy Orton, um, it was really good. I really like Luke Harper and his style and everything. He, you know, those uh, times where the the Shield used to go against the Whites and everything, uh, Luke Harper would be the main one, always flying around, like looking like a like a big cruiserweight just all over the place uh, doing suicide dives and everything but this one was actually pretty good these guys went at it with each other um there was the there was a lot of you know good spots there was uh where randy Orton uh backdrop uh luke harper onto the table and he rolled off and just looked like he was just rolling all over the place and then you had the uh the superplex up on the top and everything but it was all good even luke harper with his uh, kick right into randy orton's face and it's just everything was just everything was timed right everything was good this match was very physical and it just kept going and everything until uh luke harper just got caught up in uh rko out of nowhere you know like randy orton does to everybody you just never know when he's gonna put it on he puts it on and 
in uh, in surprising times and everything. But it was a good match, good physical match, and I, I'm really, I, I, you know, I'll watch that match again if I wanted to and everything. But good match overall. The next match is also for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. And it was uh, Naomi versus the champion Alexa Bliss. And uh, Naomi has been, she, she, you know, in the promos and everything, you know, Alexa Bliss has, uh, has uh, told her, you know, oh, you're still here and everything. Like, not even acknowledging her or anything like that. And so Naomi is probably, you know, like the third wheel, you know, when you go on a date and everything. Everyone's all like, oh, okay, you're, the, you're right there. These two are the main attraction right here, but you're right there. But she got the championship match tonight and everything, and then uh, it was a good match overall. You know, both women. You know, the one, the first women's match with uh, with uh, Becky Lynch and Mickey James was really good, and I really liked that one. I already said what I had to say about the second one, but this one was actually pretty good. Uh, Naomi came out pretty good, and these guys had a or these ladies had a very good physical match with each other, and. Uh, you know, they, they, there was kickouts and everything. There was some close, you know, some close falls. And eventually, Naomi won at the end. She became the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Good on her. So she gets to go into WrestleMania in her hometown as a champion. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll see Alexa Bliss wanting to have her rematch at WrestleMania. But, uh, but yeah, it was pretty good overall match. I liked it. It was physical. It was really good for it's. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting that SmackDown did. Um, they put on three women's matches, and you know, to me, it was it was really good, and I I, I liked it. I really did. Really did like it. All right, and the last match in the main event is what everybody was wanting to see is the elimination chamber between the Miz, AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Baron Corbin, Bray Wyatt. And the champion John Cena, and uh, first you had uh, the first man to make his way out was Dean Ambrose. He went one pod. Baron Corbin went the second. The Miz went to the third. Bray Wyatt went into the fourth. So the two that were starting to match is AJ Styles and the WWE champion John Cena. And uh, these two had a very physical match with each other. These guys always, when these two get together, they always have very good matches. They they had a very good match uh, at SummerSlam. They had a very good match at the Royal Rumble. And so these two starting to match very good. These guys were going all over with each other. Uh, the first one out was uh, was Ambrose, who got a pop, you know, when his uh, when he got picked and everything. And he, he was just uh, tossing everybody around. He just threw Cena into the, to the, to the steel chains and everything. Uh... AJ Styles went at him. Ambrose, you know, got him. Did a like a suplex flip for AJ Styles on the outside. Stand, he just left standing. He just picked him up, flipped him down, just let him drop down. It was crazy. AJ Styles, I don't know how he could take these, but he's good damn worker, and I really like that. Um, so these guys, uh, these guys uh, had a very good physical match. Ambrose uh, was trying to grab, I think it was AJ Styles, or AJ was trying to grab him. Cena comes over, grabs both of them, and then there was a double uh, two-man German suplex, and that was pretty good. So the next one out was Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin came in, looked very good. He was going after everybody. He's just running over everybody. Um, the next man that came out is uh, Bray White. Bray White, same thing. He was just all over the place. He was just going after everybody. Um they did uh they did some spots to where uh Cena and uh, AJ Styles were climbing up on top you know on on top but on the side of the of the cage and everything they were both trying to punch each other off eventually uh AJ Styles punched Cena off and Cena fell all the way down and it it, it was it was it was a crazy match and I really liked it even when um even when uh, AJ Styles climbed up on top of the pod and everything, then Dean Ambrose met him up on the top of the pod. And then there's that pixie glass that's up there. And they were just both of them grabbing each other, knocking each other's heads back and forth, grabbing each other back and forth, back and forth. And it, it was it was very good. Um, so eventually they were trade shots with each other and everything. Uh, then the next man out, last man, is... Uh, is the Miz who didn't want to come out because Baron Corbin was waiting for him, and he Baron Corbin was telling him to get out. The Miz is just looking out the pot, and he's just like, "Do I want to go out or not?" 
And uh, here Ambrose uh, came over, rolled him up, pinned him. And uh, Baron Corbin, he got he got mad. He, yeah, he got mad. He went after Ambrose, and those two went after each other. Uh, he beat down Ambrose and did the end of days to him and everything. And that's when uh, that's when the Miz finally got out of his pod and her and jumped in and uh, pinned Dean Ambrose. So the first two out is uh, Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose. So we might see a little tease there of uh, Dean Ambrose going against uh, Baron Corbin for maybe the Intercontinental title. Never know. Um, so, yeah. So these, these guys went after each other again. Uh, with uh, It was Wyatt, The Miz, John Cena, and AJ Styles. And The Miz was finally trying to do all he can against everybody else. Um the Miz uh, was mocking Daniel Bryan with the yes chance and everything and doing some of the, the yes kicks to White and Cena. And he did a double draw kick to uh, Cena and White. And then uh, Styles came in, and both of them were going after each other. Uh, Miz put them all into the corner and everything, and he was going after each one of them doing the same draw kicks, the running draw kicks in the corner like Daniel Bryan does. And then the Miz, uh, he, he went up to the top rope and everything, and... He did a cross body onto Cena. Cena grabbed him, did a roll, got back up, still holding the Miz, got him up, did an AA, and pinned the Miz right in the middle of the ring. So now we got Wyatt, Styles, and Cena left. And uh, these guys were going after all each other and everything. And, you know, the Cena at one point got Bray Wyatt in the AA, got him down. Um, as soon as Bray Wyatt moved out of the way, then uh, Cena got back up. AJ Styles got him. It's the Styles clash. Got it. Uh, only two count. Only got him with a two count and everything. So uh, Cena, you know, bantering. He's going to go to WrestleMania as a champion and everything. And uh, what he, he goes after Bray Wyatt. Uh, he's trying to do what he can with Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt ends up countering his sister Abigail and he pins John Cena right in the middle of the ring. Big pop when John Cena got eliminated. So this at this point is guaranteed to have a new WWE champion. Uh, Wyatt and AJ Styles stare at each other. They, you know, they they had they're pretty physical with each other. These guys, if you guys, if we ever saw AJ Styles against Bray Wyatt one on one, I'm pretty sure it'd be a pretty good match and everything. They went after each other. At one point, he grabbed AJ Styles for sister Abigail. AJ Styles blocked it, rolled him up for two. They traded shots. Wyatt to the floor, close line, two count, and all that. And uh, they go back and forth, back and forth. AJ Styles springboards in and nails a 450 splash, but Bray Wyatt kicks out at two. Styles goes on the outside. He, you know, his signature, uh, his signature where he pulls down his uh, his elbow pad, and he's going for the springboard again. He's going to go for his uh, phenomenal elbow. Once he does that, Bray Wyatt caught him in the air, got him, kisses Ed, sister Abigail, right in the middle of the ring, pin AJ Styles. New WWE champion, Bray Wyatt. You know, at the at the end of it, Bray Wyatt, you know, he does his whole moniker. The lights go out. He's holding the title with his hands out. He's on his knees. He's looking. And uh, eventually, uh, Randy Orton comes out on the entranceway. He's staring, uh, at, he's staring at Bray Wyatt because these two now have to go against each other at WrestleMania now. If anything happens between now and WrestleMania, that's the card right there. That's the that's the match for Randy Orton. Since he's the Royal Rumble winner, it'll be Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship. Overall, I I really I really enjoyed this uh, this pay per view between uh, between all the matches except for one one match sleeper match for me. It was pretty good. Solid matches all through the card. I really enjoyed it. SmackDown did really good with this show, and they went. Sometimes, you know, with the, they don't go the whole three hours. Sometimes they do like two and a half, two forty-five, or something like that. But they went over the three-hour mark, which I was impressed with. So I'm interested in seeing what uh, Raw can do with uh, their show with Fastlane. But, uh, yeah, if uh, you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, whole little review that I just did, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and hopefully we can hear from you guys soon. Uh, thank you for listening, and see you guys later.